Culture is the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. Welcome to the No Name RC Podcast. Get ready for some serious bench racing. But be warned, we speak our minds, express our thoughts, and sometimes things can get a little rowdy. Hate, and he just was influenced by the hate coming from the left, the hate coming from the right. And let's get back to more club racing and less of this rowdy. It's hard not to be sense. arrogant when you're always right. You know? See what I mean? That's exactly why people call you <laughs> arrogant, Max. You may not agree with everything we say, but it's definitely worth a listen. And our pick, can you stop whatever you're doing? Join your host, Leslie the Great, with co-hosts and guests as they get together <laughs> to chat our series. Hey, after that race that I watched this morning, I have to talk about it. Hundred bucks right here, hundred dollars, bro. Oh no! <laughs> I like this. Yes, 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 indeed. Nitro's the glory, but e buggy pays the bills. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode number 291 of the No Name RC Podcast. I'm your host, Keno White, a.k.a. Left of the Great. Once again, no middleman Max this week. But we do have another one-off interview with you with another repeat guest who's been on the podcast before. But before there was video, that's right, another S-Works driver, Camden Lime. It was a great chat with him. Talk more about that in a minute. But before we get into that, I have to say thank you to some people out there and a big shout out to the NNRC squad around the world. Without you guys, none of this is possible. Thank you guys for the continued support. It's enabled us to get to 291 episodes and do this for over five years. We greatly appreciate it. But if you can do one thing for me, if you listen to this on the audio side of things, that's great. Please leave a review there. But please come over and check out the YouTube side as well. Hit that sub notification, like button, leave a comment, leave a share. It helps the algorithm, helps grow our channel. We greatly appreciate it. Plus, a lot of our podcast is done with video in the background, so you are kind of missing out if you aren't watching it. I also understand that people listen to podcasts early, too. That's fine. Also, Big shout out to the NNRC patrons as well as the YouTube members. You guys go the extra mile supporting this podcast financially. We greatly appreciate your support. Uh, every little bit helps. If you wish to support the podcast financially, you can. Uh, it, every month, help us out. It also gives you perks to early access and other things. We greatly appreciate for that. Links are in the written description below of the affiliate of those links as well also a big shout out to our sponsors we can't do this without our sponsors and we have affiliate links coupon codes and all of that good stuff in the written description of the podcast for them they are invisible speed high tech rc course tech usa sidewinder fuel myako beach rc techno rc clinic rc stacked rc racecraft usa elite rc productions and donovan rc a big shout out to our official no name rc podcast drivers at david runnefalk Robert Badier, Alexander Hagberg, Matty G, Pekko Evenen, Yuna Hotnan, and the Iceman Mason Fuller. And a shout out to our affiliate companies. You can find links for them in the written description as well to their companies as well. Let them know that you heard about us on heard about them on the No Name RC podcast. So that's right, everybody. We're back this week. I don't know when this is being released. It's probably being released the week after RC program. Or well, I might release it the week prior. I don't know. Uh, but we had a chat with another Astrox driver and young driver and realized he's only 19 still because he's been around for so long. Uh, Camden Lyme was a great chat with him, about an hour and five minutes of just talking RC, what has been going on with his life, how he's, uh, he's been really successful in the last two years, I'd say, what he's doing and what his goals are coming up next. So I hope you guys appreciate this uh, talk with him. It's, I wanted to get some of the younger guys on her as well and just have a chat with them. He's been working really hard, so I think it's good that he's on her. And him and his dad are one, two of the main reasons why the SRX team is so popular in the USA now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this chat with Camden Lime. Thank you, Camden, for your time. It was great chatting with you. Uh, this is brought to you by uh, Invisible Speed and Sidewinder Fuel, as well as High Tech RC. So thank you uh, for all those companies for their support. We hope you guys enjoy the interview and uh, thank you once again, Camden, for your time. We greatly appreciate it. With that said, let's get cracking on the interview. But first, a word from our sponsors. Stop scrolling. You want to be Lewis Hamilton? 
Learn something new with Invisible Speed. You can't do everything at 100% maximum speed. You have to be smooth. I mean, when you drive a real car, if you drive a real car, how do you, do you just, when you get to a 90 degree corner to t- turn into the parking lot, do you go like that with the steering wheel? Do you like slam on the throttle and the brake? No, you probably turn the wheel smooth and get on the throttle smooth. Same thing with an RC car. If you want to learn more and make your speed visible, Stop scrolling. That's right. Stop scrolling. Invisible Speed. We have affiliate links for Invisible Speed for all the courses and books in the written description below. Up next, High Tech RC has been a big supporter of the podcast, and they have just released their RDX 1 200 ACDC multifunction smart charger. Aim at the econo- economic econ- economy line for the uh, charges of High Tech at a price of $79.99. High Tech's new RDX 1200 is compact and versatile charger designed for speedily charging your packs and meet the diverse needs of the entire RC community. Perfect for use at home on the go. The state-of-the-art charger has a durable design, user-friendly intuitive interface, a bright LCD screen, and is easy to configure for all battery chemistries. Also ensuring safe and efficient charger. The RDX 1200 offers a full 100 watt of power when charging a 120 VAC volt a C coin and up to a 200 watt on a DC coin. It also features multiple modes to help maximize your performance and your battery's lifespan. The RDX 1200 is dependable, flexible charger solution and a standout choice for its functionality, safety, and portability. You can find links for that in the written description of this podcast. Also, a big shout out to Side One of Fuel. Morgan Fuel has been collaborating with many of the world's top drivers for over 40 years. This has enabled them to test our fuels in many of the most challenging situations and take the development of competition fuels to the next level. The result is Sidewinder, the market's most powerful racing fuel. This fuel has been track tested and proven by national and world champions such as Ryan Cavallari, Ryan Mayfield, Greg Degani, Mark Mavidis, and their current top driver is national finalist Middle Bump or Phi Long Win, and many more other drivers. These drivers appreciate that Side One is blended perfectly for high performance needs of competitive racing. Don't let victory slip through your fingers. Purchase Sidewinder today. And with that said, let's get on to our interview with Camden Line. What's going on, everybody? I am here with one of the veteran, but very young and up and coming. Not up and coming, still up and coming. But dude, you just told me you're 19. For some reason, I feel you're so much older than that. Yeah, only 19, born in 05. You've been around this game for quite a long time, haven't you? Yeah, it's been a long journey, but I love every every, every single second of it. It's been awesome. Awesome. Well, if you guys don't know who this is, this is the young Camden Lime, who I had the pleasure of meeting many, 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 many years ago now. And uh, you just come off a very good run at Nationals. I'm fortunate to make the main. If you had had an LCQ, I think you would have made it. What happened to you in that final? Uh, I ended up breaking a gearbox, which I uh-huh. had never done before. So, man, it only f- happened. That's two years in a row. Last year, I was in a bump spot too, and I broke. And, yes, because uh, you was fast last year in, in Chico. Just the things I've never broke before, and it would only happen at the nationals. I know, I know. I love that race, though. I love that race. Oh, it looked like so it was cool. a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a great time. <clears throat> All right. So, if you guys don't know who Camden Lime is, 19 years old, he's from Arizona. Are you from Phoenix? Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's called uh, Peoria, Arizona. Okay, so from Phoenix, Peoria, Arizona. His father is uh, Tim Lime, who's the S Works team manager. I've known you since 2017. Yeah, uh, probably when, close around there. Yeah, yeah, Ron. That's when I went to my first DNC. I think it was you, Pavitas, and Max, who were all in that intermediate, that iconic. I one of my favorite intermediate finals of DNC ever because Max saved the day. But in the long run. You've probably become the, you're still the only one that's racing at a, a high competitive level. Yes, Pavidis is her, but not as active as you are, have been over the last two years. But uh, welcome to the podcast. You've been on her before. I think you was on her. Was you on her for a youth program or you've been on her before? Yeah, I, I was on here after I won in uh, RC2. At the, oh, uh, RCGP. 2019. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're going to touch on that. We're going to touch on that. But you haven't been on her since we started doing uh, videos. So. No, no, your first time being on video. But we want to thank you for joining us. And uh, yeah, I guess you're 19 years old. You're from Peraria. 
Did I say it wrong, wrong? Peoria? Peoria. Peoria, Peoria yeah. Arizona. You're kind of doing RC full-time now, but you've been doing RC for quite a long time. Uh, I, I like to ask this. JQ hates it, and I love to ask it just because he hates it. Uh, how did you get started in this crazy RC game? I know your dad used to fly planes. I don't know if it came from that. Yeah, so pretty close. Uh, my dad uh, used to be a national champion in RC pylon racing. Um, he worked for Horizon Hobbies for like 20-something years, I think. Um, and uh, right next to the, the flying field that he used to go to was the Nitro Pit, uh, which you know, is a historic facility in RC for many years. Um, Nitro Challenge was there. And uh, and I just started with marshalling cars when I was like three years old. I'd sneak away from the pylon field and go marshal cars. And I just, I don't know, I never got into the pylon scene. I just didn't really enjoy it. I just liked the car aspect the way the uh everything every, just the way everything um rc cars is you know um so yeah i started uh yeah i think i got my first car when i was like three or four years old my dad got me a traxxas slash um got it i mean immediately he he had raced rc cars too at the nitro pit and uh but he was a full-time pylon racer at this point and uh he got me a low c i don't know whatever the two wheel was back then 22 something i don't know um and uh yeah we went to this track name one hobbies um and it just never looked back uh and then i've been racing ever since so i think i got into like kind of competitive racing when i was like five um and then just kind of worked my way up sweet so kind of kind of typical slash slash has gotten a lot of people into rc yep so Especially in your age group, uh, because that kind of came around. Might have been on yeah. the going out phases of that. But uh, you and your dad raced heavily. When I met you, you was running HB. You was kind of with HB when it was at its peak, like peak era, like that. Tasman, they had uh, Rana Fog. They had big teams, you know, they had Ogden, all this type of stuff. So you've been with HB for quite some time. Uh, and then... Uh, you know, you're also a personality. You've done some commentating. You're a very, very friendly young man. You're always around. You've, that's why I, I think you seem a lot older than your age because you've been doing this for a quite long time. But you've been around. You kind of grew up at the track. So that's cool. Yeah. Always respectful, too. You know, we always have some laughs, jokes. Always nice to have a frosty beverage with you. Uh, but definitely you and your dad, two people that I like to see at the races. And... um yeah, I think uh, we're going to start it off. You was running HBUs, like, I, I think it was 2019 when you won the RC2 race at the RCGP, which was the biggest race we had it at, had it at Thunder Alley. It was probably the most competitive RC2 class that we had had. I think that we have had, and the biggest, like, you was racing against, like, this was when SoCal racing was banging, banging. You had, like, yeah, it was insane. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Who else was there? Was like was Jermaine there? I think uh, Jermaine. Um, uh, like I think Colin Herzig was was. I mean, he still is a good racer, but back in like that age. Yeah, because uh, this was there. He was good. Yeah, um, because that's when the Dexters came yep, from Australia, yep, yep. and I think in the LCQ, which was, was a great LCQ, Bump actually got it at the end. By no, Dexter got it because no, yeah, Herzig Will Bump was there too. I forgot about that. Yeah. I forgot about it too. It's been so long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was five years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. You was what? You was fourteen. Yeah, fifteen maybe. Uh, no, I was. I'm pretty sure I'll be four. I think I was fourteen. Wow. Yeah, that seems so long ago. But I, re if anybody wants to see a great race, go check it out. RC two battle, uh, the LCQ bump and Herzog went over the bump, the jump, they crashed, and then Dexter who came all the way from Australia. Went by. I think he. I think he went on to finish like third or something like that. Yeah, he got That's third. It. I think he podium. Yeah. So this was like stacked. You came out there swinging. You beat like Westergaard. Cody was there. You know, you had a very, very stacked uh, RC two class, and you won that. That was like I, I'm, I'm sure you had won some races prior to that, but that was like your big. Uh, I think at that point, probably one of your biggest wins at the time. And I'll never forget. I think we went to breakfast the next day or lunch and you was talking with uh i don't i mean we could probably talk about it now but your dad was talking with max and there's a lot from s so i know he wasn't happy you know i know you was leaving hb for some reasons 
And then after that, you kind of made the switch to S Works, <clears throat> and your dad became the 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 what he is now, the manager. And I'll never forget thinking, man, I don't know if that was the right decision for you at the time because you're so fast with that HP, right? You're yeah, so yeah. fast with that HP. You was on a onward, very very good onward forward trajectory. And I mean, I know I know why that deal went through, that deal went south. Pretty much. I mean, there's probably some other reasons because your dad told me. But um, when you got up in the s I was just like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Because at that time, we had kind of seen the brand in the in an Amer- in, uh, sorry, in Europe. Well, let's 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 re back. Let's rewind. s has had many iterations in in USA. We saw A-Man have it. We're seeing, I think. Um, A-Man, A-Man had it for a while. A-Man and then um, RC1. Uh, RC1. No, there was somebody else in between. Uh, Raul had it for a while, but that didn't go anywhere. Um, but it just kind of it, it, the best chance it had back in the day was when it was on the A main. I think Marty Corn was the team manager. You had a Sushi Hara. It was it was packed. But it, unfortunately, Austin Blair. Austin Blair, who is racing again, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah. Right. Uh, he was very fast with that car because he was the fastest guy with that car at one point. Yeah, he had made a couple of DNC mains with it and kind of somewhat honestly put it on the map a little bit in america and then it just kind of went away like it just disappeared for a while after after uh he left. got rid of it yeah he left too yeah he made a nationals if i'm not i think he made a national final that was the year well he made the semi that was the year that him and both cool got docked the lap 2017 they got both docked the lap yeah. uh at uh the race that tebow won they both got the lap because their term option didn't show up for their semi and for their race that they have term option one and I can't remember if Blair made it to the final. I know Cole kind of went out there and just kicked ass and bumped up. Yeah, he was an animal that week. Yeah, it was that's that's what Cole Ogden does. Like you know, that's just like the type of when he when he's on, he's on. Yep. But uh, I up to that point, I was just like, man, I don't know this if this is the best decision for you. Um, I also know that like in that time, that Beach was going to start taking over. Well, I think it was maybe a year later that Beach started taking over distribution of it. Um, but I was very. I was very skeptical about your your switching to s I knew it was going to be a lot of work. And I'm not going to lie. It seemed like you did have some struggles at the beginning. I think it was just you. Maybe you and Hackert, right? At well, point. so, um, yeah, I joined after RC2. Um, we had went to dinner with Max, um, George, Juan Carlos. Um, and because uh, Juan Carlos was already on the team at that point um, with Cab. So when I joined in 2020, yeah, shit, I forgot about that. Yeah, Cav, it was just me and Cav, legit, yeah. just traveling to all the races together, just me and Cav. And uh, he ended up leaving after 2020. That's when mm-hmm. we picked up Heckert uh, for 21. And you know, we had a great. I mean, when I joined in 2020, it was it was definitely a struggle because mm-hmm. you know I was pretty much by myself, me and my dad trying to build this thing off the ground almost in a way. And uh, I mean, RC1 was doing awesome in Florida, but just on the West Coast, it was there was no presence at all anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. So me and my dad, yeah, we kind of just almost took a gamble and joined. And I mean, it was one of the best decisions I think we've ever made. Um, But yeah, when then in 21, um, we had Heckert join, which was awesome. Um, We got me and Heckert became pretty much best friends from that. Mm -hmm. You know, we went to every single race together and we're still, we we still hang out all the time to this day. Um, and then, uh, yeah, in 22, we picked up Joe and B-Rose and Tanner Denny. Um, so it was us five going to the races. And it was then that's when it started kind of booming. That's when we got BHRC as well. Um, mm-hmm. BHRC started distributing. And uh, and then 2020, what, what year am I at? Three. So, sorry, no. It was just uh, B-Rose wasn't on the team at that point yet. B-Rose joined oh, in 2023. Yeah. So then B Rose joined and uh it was, you know, awesome again. He's one of my best friends. So it just made the team environment for myself even better. You know, now I had a full team. We had mm-hmm. uh, customers coming up asking questions and it was it was it felt like a real race team at like like the most it's felt. And then mm-hmm. uh yeah, twenty twenty four. Um unfortunately we Hecker uh stepped a different direction, but we picked up Mason four, Caden four, and you know Mason is Great killing pickups. it so far. And, Great uh, yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, at at some point it was just I forgot. So we're gonna digress back to Calf because I do have him in my notes. 
uh, a lot of people don't understand that on that second, I think he did two years at S works on that second year at S works. He really kind of S works. He hit his stride and started doing well with that car. And it was just you and him and the Europeans. Right. And, um, and then he left, he went to TLR and he kind of did the same thing. He did, he did two years at TLR. He kind of did the same thing. So it, with Kev, it takes about a year for him to get used to a thing, uh, a chassis, and then he starts doing well. And I'll never forget Tim Lyman was like, but he did so well. Like, and he did so well. I said, yeah, but TLR has that prestige, right? That name. They're probably looking at that security. Money, too, right? Uh, and then um, I think also when you guys got Joe Bornhorst on the team from Techno, which might have been, was that 2021 he came on or 2022? Oh, we picked up Hecker once. Uh, right. So Hecker left HB. Uh came to you guys and then i think once jb came joe bornhorse kind of came on it he kind of i think that's when i really started to see things kind of switch up and i think he bought some I, i'm i don't know maybe i'm wrong or not but i i think i've watched joe over the last since 2022 i'm obviously hasn't been doing much this year due to the birth of his daughter but he kind of approached this very professionally he he was hitting the track a lot especially 10 scale doing a lot of 10 scale work and that's kind of when I saw the the changes in the car and the team coming about. Uh, do you think Joe Bornos had a big uh, influence in that and uh, changing s as well? I think Joe had a huge um, help, not only to just bringing his name on board, but to us younger guys too. Joe's so inca- uh, mechanically smart in the head, and uh, he's just such a good dude. And no matter what, he's willing to help. Um, he like even this past weekend, he didn't have the best chuggy the whole week and uh, he, he missed out on the main. And immediately after his B main, he came over and started helping wrenching on my cars, Mason's cars, making sure everyone's ready to go. Um, I think Joe was a huge help to what we have going on now, just because not only he's the big teddy bear that everybody sees, but he's just a great guy and uh, is always willing to help anybody no matter what and uh yeah i think just he's got a really good popular name too in the rc industry so i think it just helps out what was some uh, besides just not having the team help what was some of the early struggles with the platform coming from hb for you when you switched over in 2020 i mean the biggest thing was for sure the pillow balls um just trying to get used to driving that i had never done it before because i had came from tlr before hb and i mm. started at tlr and didn't leave for I don't even know, seven years from when I started RC cars. Um, and then when I went to HB, it was, I mean, that car, that HB car was unreal to drive. Um, was, on the alley, like unbeatable. Yeah, I think unbeatable everybody that. knows that was probably one of the most dominant cars that we have ever seen in RC, just with Rana Falk, the way he drives it, Tessman, Cole, um, and, and all the other drivers. So that was probably the biggest thing is, I almost wanted to like let my guard down too early. Like I just didn't feel like I, when I was driving the car for the first time, I'm like, Oh, this is not even close to my HP. I was also immature. So I just thought, Oh, this car is not for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I went to work and, uh, I got to where, you know, I made my first DNC B main in the pro class in 2020. Thanks to the help. Like Elliot was there that year. So I got a lot of help from him. Um, we got pretty close that week and I just, just kept on pushing and pushing and pushing. And then I started doing all my own wrenching, Mm. um, in 2020, like around 2019. Um, Mm. and I just (laughs) was just an immature, you know, not lock tighten screws, leaving screws. I mean, I'm still not the best wrench, but I've definitely gotten a lot better. Um, and then, yeah, I had a stretch in like in 2021 where I was almost breaking every run. And I just, and Spencer I Hecker that. was, he was not though. Spencer Hecker mm-hmm. was getting top tens, top fives. He was killing it with our program he had going. And I was just kind of mentally drained after that year. And uh, I actually took a pretty big break and just went and played golf for a while. And then uh, mm. 22, I kind of got it back going slowly and slowly. And then, yeah, 2023 kind of just shot back up. And to where I feel like I should have been. Yeah, because I, I know you didn't want to leave HB because you really liked it there. You'd seen a lot of success. It was super popular. Like, yeah, the team was it, awesome too. Yeah. Everybody was so awesome. 
it was such a great team, a great, it was a different time. You know, it was only five years ago, but it was a different time in RC. It was pre COVID. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, we heard God, like Ron Falk thought, thought highly of you. Cole and those guys thought highly of you. Uh, I remember that, that RC too. I have it up here. I have the finals. I remember just how well those cars were working because uh, we had, you know, we had, I think it was Ongaro was there. So we had a lot of guys and he was on the back foot, but you, like all the HBs, like it was um, Ronald Falcon Cole, Kyle McBride had an HB. Mm-hmm. Somebody mm-hmm. else had an HB. I can't remember, but every single HB, I think even, wasn't Jermaine and those guys still on HB at this time? Yeah, Jermaine was on HB. I mean, I think the final had like eight out of the 13 cars or something like that were HB. Really? Maybe nine, it was an insane number. Yeah, that's just a testament to how popular that class was right i mean that 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 car was <clears throat> so that was always a good thing to see why can't i find i'm trying to find the uh rc2 stream here uh and i know he was a little bit reluctant so and then like you said a little bit immature going into that like going from the real cool team to a a, a brand that had nothing like that's why it's different now you know yeah, than it was well, sure. ago. but in America, uh, it's it's a popular brand now, but it was it was nobody on that car at the moment. I think, uh, like I said, Cavallari was the, the only person. I think it was Juan Carlos Canasa and Cavallari that were over for S Works because they were. Part uh, of Elliot Arsenal. was on the team in 2020 when I had joined, but he didn't come over for. No, he wasn't at. No, no, I he didn't uh, come over for RCGP. No, no, in S Works, but I, I knew that was a big play because you know, let's be honest, like. For for some of you, well, you're probably over that now. But when you're that age, 15, 14, you want to be on that team with superstars. And I know you. I think you look up to Cole and Ronafalk quite a lot. And I I know that Ronafalk always spoke highly. And I had Elliot on her uh, last week, and he spoke highly of you. And he was like, I was hoping that he would win that. You know, if he had won the LCQ, he would have made it to the final. Uh, but you kind of put your head down. What, what what did the not get any results that you want burn you out? And then you went to golf. What what brought you back from golf to RC? I think for me, it's just I can't stay away from this stuff. I'm a I'm not only is I'm trying to, to make it my job, but it's still my my passion, my favorite thing to do. All I want to do is go drive cars. Like at the nationals I'm sitting there when I have a rain delay and I'm just like itching to go drive my car. You know what I mean? Um, but like golf is the same thing for me. Like, um, I love that too. Mm -hmm. I will never be where I am in RC compared to golf because it's just not, it's not happening. I don't have the time to practice as much as I do with my RC car. Um, but I just, yeah, the, the, for me, it was just like all my own mistakes just kept adding up and up and up and up. And I just was like, I don't know, man. And, uh, yeah, I just went and played golf for like three months. I like didn't re- drive an RC car at all. And then I went to, I forget what race I went to, but I had like the best result. I think it might've been wicked weekend or something. I made my first main, but, and then I kind of just got back into going full RC. And then when I'm home, I play a bunch of golf, but when, I try and do both. Like when I'm home, obviously I'm. It's my job to make my cars better and practice. But I'll I'll go I'll go to the RC track for a, you know, few hours and then I'll go play around the golf after. Yeah, hey, really good in golf. Uh, do you think that you could have, <clears throat> you could have like gone to school for golf and all that stuff? And yeah, and, I, I think I could have went to like a D two or D three college um, mm-hmm. and go play golf. Yeah, but the golf industry is so big and it's so much money involved in it. You don't even have to be a pro to make money in it, right? You no, can be you a- don't. But I don't have the same passion mm. that I do for RC cars. But you're very good at it, right? You are yeah, very good. Yeah, at it. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a decent golfer, yeah. So you, you've been golfing with like Ronald Falk and all that. Can you beat Ronald Falk and all that there? Uh, me and Ronald Falk went and played in uh, Vegas the day before Silver State, actually. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I beat him by one shot. There you go. He loved like dude. Yeah. I remember when he went to DNC. He was all about golf. But he was playing with my clubs, and there's a bunch of things that we could. If I go play with him in, uh, where is he living now? Spain or Sweden? Sweden. It's still in Sweden. If I go play with him in Sweden, he will. Uh, he'll probably beat me out there. I don't know, man. I think you're pretty good in golf, so I don't know. I think you. I think you definitely could have done that for school wise if you had chosen to. But you chose RC. And like, 
I guess when you did make that choice, how did it all happen? I, I mean, your dad's fully engulfed in it because he's like the manager. We're just going to bring up this uh, RC2 race from 2019 where you won. And also where I made my debut of commentary, which was something I wasn't prepared to do. So we'll just bring this up screen to screen. You can find a full race for all of this on the RCGP YouTubes. I will leave a link for that. We'll just let it play while we talk. Yeah. Um. So this was very unique. We had to, this is the first time I know we're, we're kind of going off topic, but this is the first time. Yeah, look, there's Jermaine's dad. There's Mark and H. Wow, like there's Kyle Turner's dad. Wow, there's some. There's this place. Is that? No, I about to say that looked like. Guard. Is that Westergaard? No, no, kid? that's uh, that's Marcus Garrett, but that's Anthony Westergaard's car. Okay. Kyle Johnson, yeah. Cole Jensen. Dude, this was stacked. This RC two was stacked. There's uh, a Evan, no, not Evan Vale wasn't in this. He was in the RCGP. But uh, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, you, we're playing the video here. We're looking at the startup. They had the dual gate start. There's Cody King. He was pitting. Oh. Herzig. Did Herzig make it? Yeah. So I think I think that there was two that bumped out of the LCQ. Mm, I love and LCQ. Herzig and Fee were in the bump, and then Fee got into mm-hmm. Herzig and then let Dexter go around. I think that's what happened. Speaking of which, do you think we need an LCQ back at the Royal Nationals? Well, now I do. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I think so. I think it's just a really cool thing to have. Um, it brings a lot more excitement and uh, more pressure for, for if you don't make it. Like like me, I would have a lot of pressure going into LCQ, and I, I live for that kind of feeling. Dude, I'm just I'm, – I, I want it back so bad. Bro, I'll bring back the LCQ. I'm just looking at this track, and I forgot how hard this layout was. Yeah, that's why it was awesome. Uh, Anthony, I think Anthony built this one. It was, it was yeah, amazing. Anthony built it. We have JQ. Uh, uh, he almost wanted to make JQ into a jump because he was getting on his nerves. <laughs> I like those colors. That it, those colors look more vibrant than your current yeah, colors. I, I've uh, I made a little bit of change in the paint scheme. That's just immature Camden right there. If you've seen that, that's a big mistake. Rest of and this rest of like. Westergaard, Tyler Braun, Herzog, the Ghani was in her. Wow, this this is actually a very Saxton. This is a very stacked RC two class. Yeah, I remember uh, this race. I just I would catch up to Anthony and then wreck, catch him up to him, wreck, and then finally I got in front and kind of pulled away. Yeah, good race, good race. All right, um, let's fast forward. So you you get back into full time RC. You're also doing. You're out of school. You, you're now 19. You're out of school for the last year, I would say. <clears throat> uh, I know you're doing some H, uh, HVAC with your dad, which is like AC. Heat, well, no heat. You don't need heating in. Uh, do you need heating in Arizona? Yeah, in the winter. Oh, really? Yeah. It does, it's it's not, it's really not great. I mean, it, we get down to like 50 degrees, 45. Okay, that's that's the lowest. But, yeah, but basically doing some of that with your dad, but also hitting hitting the, the track. Very hard and big races. I know you got a lot of support. You got support from S Works. You got you been in with Brent uh, Beach RC. Which oh, hold on. Let's before we get into what you've been doing, let's talk about that because I think one of the big great additions to S Works was getting uh, Beach RC on board to be a distributor and Brent behind that. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I met Brent in uh, 2019. Um, Might have been DNC. No, it was at the uh, Nationals in Hutto, Hutto, Texas. Is when I uh, like remember oh, right meeting him, I should right say. Okay. Um, and then yeah, the next two months, I had his engines in my car, and uh, I was running for him already. Um, that's why I was still on HB when I started running his engines. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, we when we first met, you know, my dad and him just kind of clicked, and then he's just been such a good guy to me. He's all he cares about is my program and making me better as well as his amazing business that he's built from the ground. Um, but yeah, when we picked up Brent, it was just kind of like we, uh, my dad and him started talking, I guess. And uh, they uh, gave the message to Max and Max kind of, I think Max had a, must have heard of him or knew of him because he was pretty, pretty down from the start. And, yeah. From uh, RCGP too, I would say. Oh, right. Yeah. That's what it was from. Yep. And uh, yeah. So when we got that, it was just like, I don't know. It just flowed. And uh, everything just felt right when we uh, got him on. And then, yeah, me and he started pitting for me full time at the races when, when we're both there together. And uh, 
yeah, it's just been awesome, man. Like there's nothing you can really complain about with uh, that program that we got going on. Oh yeah. I think uh, just like it was for JQ racing, man, we bought JQ and uh, he started with JQ racing, you know, just having availability, like his parts and his shipping and all that stuff, having that, all that available uh, made a big difference uh, from what we had. And I think that was one of, one of the reasons we're seeing uh, S works be success, finally being successful in the USA. Uh, okay. So uh, we were moving. So back, back to you deciding to chase RC full time. Um, I guess you made that decision last year or just slightly before that year. I made it. Yeah. Right. Right before 2023, I kind of said, mm-hmm. let's just do it. See what happens. Now, what does that, what does that kind of mean for you? So do you, are you working with your dad? You you are. I know you're doing some. I know you're on vacation right now. But tell us a little bit about how like a week goes. How the week before the nationals went for you? Honestly, it was just all RC. Like I I barely worked for my like I haven't really done it in quite a while. Uh, that okay. was kind of when I wasn't really doing RC full time. When I was still in school, I was working for him all summer. Mm. Um, and once I in twenty three, I like the beginning of the year. I, my dad was just like, "If you want to do it." I'll uh, give you a year to do it and see what happens. And I had a pretty good 2023 made my first pro main and buggy at a silver state. I qualified like fifth. It was awesome. I had TQ to round um, mm-hmm. nationals was awesome. And then, you know, just kind of like all the races just started kind of coming together. Um, I kind of felt more of a, one of the guys at the races. So then I went in for it again, like on 2024 and, uh, then obviously this year has been really good and uh, I just keep making bigger strides, but um, yeah, I, uh, wait, what were we talking about? I forgot. How about oh, yeah, week before nationals? Yeah. The week before well, I've, I didn't realize that you was doing this full time more. So it's just yeah. full on RC when you ain't, are you going out to your, cause I know your dad has a track. Are you going out there a lot? Or are you just like, I know like fuller, I think, was it fuller and you maybe that went to TNR, not TNR. Um, yeah, yeah. TNT. Yeah. The, the Metro, Metro Comp- compound. Yeah, yeah we're, we're full of the dog. <clears throat> yeah. I know you guys, I know Fuller came and hung out with you for like a week, uh, go into those type of tracks. And then I think you, did you guys go up? You guys went and did the, uh, you did the warm ups for the Nats, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. So that's yeah, what he, you're probably doing, that type of stuff. Plus going, I know Tim said that you guys were at your track as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I go run at, my dad's track quite a bit. Um, you know, I'll show up a hobby action every now and then throwing out my two wheel. And then, you know, Mayfield gives me a text or Spencer that he's going to the nitro compound. I might drive down there. It's just a little bit of a drive for me. Um, mm. so I'll go run with them sometimes. Beautiful facility. Schumacher's is built there. Uh, yeah. do you go to, when you go to these, what's changing your practice sessions and when you go to test and whatnot, are you approaching it a different way than say you was when you was younger? If so, w- what is your approach? Hundred percent. My approach when I was younger, it was just to go to the track and drive, just mm-hmm. drive, drive, drive. But um, to become a pro in this stuff, you need to know so much about the cars and what they do for you. Um, like I know me and Joe drive completely different. We have quite a somewhat of a different setup, and when I feel, do a change, it might feel different than when joe does it so the main thing i've been driving at the track um is hitting lines like make sure i'm hitting marks not over driving doing 30 minutes clean no wrecks and then also you know go run five minutes change something go run five minutes change something that's the biggest thing i've been trying to do okay so it sounds like yeah because jake always preaches that like go change make a change drive it for five minutes see how it check the check your lap times yeah uh uh, I, also, just development of the car. I, I say this all the time. There's a who's that giving you fuel? Is that that's a uh, Austin Panone and Ryan Taylor? There, there's some SoCal SoCal yeah. guys that I grew up with that I used to race back in the day. I don't even think they race anymore. That's yeah, crazy. neither of them do. Uh, actually, Austin showed up at one race like randomly and ran, but okay, someone's gone. Yeah, the development of the car has been excellent. I, t- I say all the time, I think I think the best pro car out there right now happens seems to be the SRX because you're seeing success on in both Europe and both in America. I mean, just this year alone, we have B Rose who won SIC, we had Juan Carlos who won Silver State, we had <clears throat> we had uh oh 
Boots win oh, yeah. DNT. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Juan Carlos obviously is a European champion with the car. He won last year. We saw a lot of success over the last 2023 and 2024. What have been some of the big changes in development on the, of this new of your car? Uh, I, I was talking to Boots. He says he just likes the new car. It's it's great. Uh, and what are some of the things that you helped on? I know you guys also were working on an American style because there's a difference, right? I don't know if it's that much of a difference nowadays because the European tracks are kind of getting to where a lot like American tracks, maybe a little bit faster. Yep. But tell us a little bit about that, about developing this car, developing a, an American setup for it and all that type of stuff. Yeah, so um, when Hecker was on the team, it was when Hecker and Joe were both on the team. Um, Billy Fisher has also been a huge help to that. Um, we had tried some narrow pivot, wider arms, and uh, shorter chassis. So Billy Fisher would straight up Dremel holes in the chassis, cut a truggy chassis down, make it shorter, smaller. Um, so that was the two things that I noticed like right away that I thought were the biggest changes. And then we actually had done that for the, uh, we did the narrow pivot wide, uh, wide arm for the world's edition that we had. And then, um, we did the small, uh, shorter chassis for the, um, Evo. Um, also on the Evo, we did the new, uh, um, steering assembly with the, uh, servo saver a different way. Um, cause we had some issues with, uh, people breaking those um and ever since we've done that it's just the car feels super durable out there reliable and man it is just so good to drive it is an amazing car i'm so excited to keep like making progress on it and uh just keep on pushing to make it better how was it working with the europeans were they kind of stuck in their ways or were they uh were they accepting of you guys input and change oh for sure um we haven't really uh well, besides the DNC, I hadn't really seen Elliot in America mm-hmm. for like three or years, four years. Yeah, you um, saw him in Spain, but um, I think for us, it's kind of like they come over and they acknowledge that they don't race on this kind of track. Like they don't race on a, the dirt at Paris. Whereas when we go over to Spain and uh, we're at Redavon, I was like, dude, I just can I have your car and I'll put your setup on. And it was vice versa at, at DNC. And then Elliot is does his own thing and he obviously made a great car to win the main. Um, but I think a lot of it is having someone on both sides. Like I think Elliot super, uh, mechanically inclined or mechanically smart. And as well as Joe having those two guys on each side, helping, you know, the younger guys and Juan Carlos kind of did his own thing at DNC, I think. Um, and then he slowly kind of went to our direction. Mm. Um, but there's still, Obviously, they drive completely different, and there's still things like the only person I've ever been on the same team with that I can drive the same, almost like pretty much the same car is B Rose. Me and him drive pretty much the identical mm. cars. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. is it that you both like in your cars? Uh, we both like a lot of steering and a lot of grip. Um, Joe likes to drive. Joe and Mason like their cars a little bit more numb. They drive <laughs> quite a bit smoother than me and B Rose. Um, but. Yeah, me and Biro's the only thing that we usually run different. He just runs uh, the VRP eight hole pistons like all the time, and I run five hole a lot. But we drive like that's who I like to um, like as yeah. setup. Right, right. I mean, gotcha. I mean, you guys have such a plethora of people to pull from. You have guys like Mika, Jorn Newman, like all yeah. the like the amount of people running the SRX chassis just in Europe alone is quite that's impressive. Like the resume that they have. Uh, funny that you say you're very much like B-Rose. So he's another one. Like he has been very, his career has took an uptick since joining. I, look, and there's no disrespect to, I know he was on Serpent and I know he was on Agama for a long time, but he was also lacking that team. Like he did have a hat mm-hmm. at Agama. He never had it at Serpent and now he seems to have it. And then he got on, you know, like, like let's, let's be honest. Like in America, you got to, if you're not on J Concepts, it's a, look, I love hot race and I love all, all that type of stuff. But J Concepts is the dominant tire in the USA. 100%, 100%. Uh, he's rewarded with that with a win at SIC. I'm super happy for him because it wasn't just like a gift. He dominated that. Like he beat oh, yeah. those guys 100% uh, right off the bat. I was so happy for I was happy for Tim. I was telling him congratulations. Like, I mean, the success that S-Works has seen on a pro level 
has been is has been great. And I need to get B Rose on her too because I keep saying I'm going to do it and I haven't done it yet. Maybe I'll record with him after. I'll hit him up. Uh, what about on a regional level? So I will say this: I see a lot of SRX cars, and this comes with time. As you get better regional guys, you'll get better results. How's that working out? Uh, with I know you guys have team Zoom meetings. Your dad must be fucking busy, like because. I'll be honest with you, like being, doing this team manager stuff is not easy, especially when you have a second, like it's your second job. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So the regional guys that we have so far, uh, we have a bunch of like regional managers. We kind of, I think techno does that as well. Um, yeah, those teams do Te- regional yeah. manager. Yeah. And I think that was a big step. We, we didn't have any of those. Um. So once we start doing that, you know, you get, you know, uh, we had a David Olson who helped build a mm-hmm. little bit, uh, South Carolina, that region. Uh, Chris Wheeler here in Arizona. Um, we got Carson Phipps up. Um, this guy, uh, one of our buddies, Mike Servo, he has killed it where he's from. Um, Mike Servo, and, I know that name. I've seen him. Yeah, right. yeah, he's a great guy. So yeah, you know, we get we just kept like you know picking these guys and uh, they match our you know energy on our team and um, just they are good people. Uh, we pick them and then they kind of help build out in their region. Um, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's been awesome. You got on, you used to go down to Mexico a lot. I know Ricardo and all those guys, Ricardo, Lico and all them guys, they're awesome dudes. Like yeah. they love, they'll be with, they'll be with S-Works for a long time. Yeah. I'm, remember, I'm planning, trying to go to Guadalajara. Really? Lucky yeah. back. I want to go to Monterey. Mexico. One of the two, I forget which race it is. I want to go to Mexico so bad just for an RC race. It's awesome. <laughs> it's the best. <laughs> those guys are the best. I know that was so crazy at the Worlds in 2022. I hope I hope we got a big contingent, a decent contingent of the Mexican guys because they made it a party. Um, those guys are awesome, but great dudes. They've been with S Works for a long time. We can't, we cannot between your yourself and the team that you guys have established, and your dad, like and Beach RC. It's it's run exceptionally. How about uh, communication with Max? Do you get the owner of S Works? Do you get any? Do you chat with him at all? Is he is he available to you? I know he's a busy man. Uh, I would say he's available to us, but we don't really talk to him. I, I don't gotcha. talk to him. Um, my dad does, obviously. Um, I think him, M- Max, George, they all have meetings every now and then. Um, Who's George, by the way? What's that? Who's George? George is like the guy behind under under Max. He like okay. runs pretty much the whole thing, but okay. Max owns it. Um, okay. But we have a big group chat full of um, – you know, the American factory guys, the European factory guys, and then all the, the engineers and um, like all that. But who we really deal with um, from Europe um, is Misha. We we, do, we, we talk he to him a lot. Really good. Or, He's yeah, smart. Because yeah. he does all the shipping. He works for s yeah. He does yeah. all the shipping yeah. and all that stuff. I know. Mika, what's up? What's up, dude? GT, Mika, GT. Send Jordan Newman on her for a race, a GT race. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, let's let's touch on your nationals. This because we're recording this. The nationals happened about two weeks ago. I'm not sure when this is gonna go out. It might be before RC Pram. It might not. Uh, let's talk about that, dude. Because you was fucking fast once again. Like, look, I'm gonna be honest. In Truggy, you're always fast, right? In Truggy, you're you're good. You're good in buggy. But like Truggy is your battle. I think you like driving, but you've you've made some a lot of gains in your buggy. You was, I mean, even Max was like, he was so fast. Like, we didn't know what happened. And um, tell us a little bit about your nationals this past two weeks ago. Yeah, so we started on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, me and Mason, we had went to the warm-up. And uh, we had found stuff that we both like. And, you know, me and him were just pretty fast out of the gate. Um, and we kept that same climb the whole week. Um, qualifying for me was awesome. Um, I had a six and a four on the first day of qualifying for truck. And then like a seven and a five or something like that. So it was like really good points on the first day of qualifying kind of made the second day a lot easier. And uh, so the second day did some changes, um, almost got a TQ missed it by a couple tenths over Mason, which was kind of funny. Um, and then, yeah, main day, I think I qualified fourth in truck and then, third in a semi and I actually led a couple laps in truck, which was really cool. Um, I led like nine minutes into the race. I was going nine minutes, Mason and 
uh, Mayfield were only going 730. And when I came in for fuel, my gun wasn't – I mean, we hadn't had an issue and uh, ended up dying mm-hmm. in the pit lane, which is Tell very – What do you mean it died? Huh? What do you mean it died, your fuel gun? Like, like uh, I guess the gun wasn't I, – I don't know. It just – I used it in the warm up and it was fine. And then we used it in the first one and it, it killed the engine. Then the second one, we did it again, killed the engine. Mm-hmm. So then we changed the gun for the rest of the race. But and no problems. No problems. Hmm, that's crazy. I never knew yeah, that. Was unfortunate. Yeah. So I died in pit lane. I only, I only lost a couple, like maybe six seconds, seven seconds. So I was still in fourth, I think, or fifth. And then I was that that position all the way till the second stop, and then that's when it happened. And then I actually ended up breaking out. Um, I broke something that I also haven't broke again. So <laughs> two things in the one weekend. How did you I break? Can you say? Or is it- yeah, I mean that's fine. Uh, I broke a universal. Like it just okay. snapped right where the ball is. Mm. Yeah, so unfortunate, unfortunate but-, but it happens. And then yeah, buggy the semi. I just came out kind of swinging. Like I was just kind of pacing Jared. Uh, me and him. And he had a great battle for the first, I don't know how long, 15 minutes of the race. And, uh, yeah, I just uh, – I don't think I had even flipped upside down at that point. Um, and I did one wreck at the end of the straightway. And then, like, half a lap later, I made another little bobble, and then my car was broken. So oh, man. I was pretty upset. Um, you know, kind of storm yeah. off the stand, take a walk, and uh, kind of cool down. But – once that's done, you know, went ran back and uh, helped pit B Rose for the main. He ended up getting fourth place, which was a great result for him. Um, so super unfortunate, but the speed I showed and the consistency I showed, um, I kind of just showed that I'm here to stay and I want to stay. At the top. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Uh, you're still young. You're only 19, so you do have a lot of career. How old's B Rose? Is he 21 now? I'll be 20. Uh, he's 20. Okay, so he's, he's, gonna, you're, he's almost twenty. He might, like around her, so. he might be twenty. No, he's not twenty-one yet. He's almost twenty. Fuller is what your age now or younger he's than 19. you? He's nineteen. I'm five days older than Mason. All right, <laughs> all right. So, uh, as a nineteen-year-old who's been, a, you're a veteran. You, you're you're making these mains. You well, okay. You didn't make your main, obviously, uh, in buggy, but you're making these mains. You haven't you having some good 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 finishes, good qualifying. Maybe not the best finishes that you're you're you 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 want, but it's very hard. Like people don't understand. Like two bobbles, like you said, put you way back. Unless you're like a Mayfield or a Fenn who could come back from that type of stuff. Yeah. It's very hard, right? Uh as as a young racer, looking look, now look from the outside in, what are some of the things you need to probably address in your program to now go from making these mains on a steady basis to getting to that top five, top three runs, maybe to a win. What do you think has uh, to happen? I think the biggest thing is just learning race craft, um, mm-hmm. how to how to manage races. And like even if like Mayfield wasn't even the fastest guy. Um, Great race craft. And his, just, his race craft is second to none, which is mm-hmm. nice to have him around because I get to watch and learn and um, try and figure out things that he does and uh it's fun to do that but i think yeah the biggest thing is just making sure my equipment's always 110 percent ready to go um and making sure i'm always uh, mentally prepared for these weekends and uh just keep on pushing and uh biggest thing too is consistency um a lot of the guys just like the younger guys have that (laughs) super fast pace but wreck and I've actually felt like I've gone kind of away from that. Like I still drive really hard, but I'm not driving over the limit or over my limit. Gotcha. Um, so that's the biggest thing I think. Now, how, but how do you work on that? Like, how do you work on your race craft? Is it just being around somebody like Mayfield who has, who's, who, who probably suffered from the same thing that you have right now, because there was many times Mayfield didn't finish a race because he went, 100% all the time. Uh, he's learned to back it down and be, bump it up to 100 when he needs it. How do you How do you think you mentally, because it's a mental thing, right? It's a mental thing. The only way you, you can the only yourself. way you can learn the race craft is mm-hmm. being in that race and failing. Mm-hmm. It's the only way you'll ever learn. And I learned that. I've already learned that just this, this past weekend. Um, Dakota was like that for years. I mean, Mm-hmm. There's been so many races Dakota should have won, and now he's got racecraft to where 
he he's not driving past his limit 24 seven. Um, and he knows how to manage a race once he's in the lead, stuff like that. So that's just, you don't, you can't, it's hard to justify. You can't really learn it until you're in that situation, mm-hmm. battling for the win or a top five or something like that. Okay. Let's talk about one of your teammates, uh, Mason Fuller. Yeah. Who I'm, I'm all about team full. I think, I think uh, he's very fast. You, you said he likes more of a numb car. So I assume that you and him have completely different driving styles altogether. The styles I would say are pretty different. He's very smooth. Um, super like he still drives hard, but I don't know mm-hmm. how to explain. He's just like a, he's punched, but it's the smoothest punch you'll ever seen. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say our stuff, like our comp- setups aren't completely different. There's definitely yeah. things that he likes more than me. But we still, I mean, Mason's one of my best friends, uh, and it's really cool to have him on the team, as well as Caden. Um, but, yeah, I, I think having him on the team, not only for me and b like, we're just – us five guys are just super close, and it, it just mm-hmm. kind of works in America. He kind of – he got up to speed very fast, too, because, I mean, he went into uh, SIC, brand-new cars. They had to be broken in. Um, yeah, I don't know how he did that. I don't know how he did that. That was insane. Like that was probably one of the greatest performances. I mean, yeah, he can finish third. Like I finished third. I think he finished fifth or something in e buggy too. Or no, yeah. he got he got in the top three. And he got second in e buggy. Probably I can't remember. I can't remember yeah. what happened last weekend. This weekend, let alone what happened at SIC. <laughs> but, but yeah, if- he he came to my house like right before DNC, mm-hmm. I think, and you know. We kind of just worked with him. I worked with him, and we worked really good together, which is awesome. Um, and we got even more up to speed, and then it just kept climbing and climbing. Like DNC had a good result. Um, I mean, he, I think he would have won e buggy if he didn't have that break in the back. But luckily, Juan Carlos, I think won. I don't know. Yeah, he won. Either, I can't. Yeah, he won. So yeah, him, it's, it's hard to remember these people that win, and it's hard. Uh, but. Yeah, and then he came to my house before the warm up. We ran even more at Adobe, and then we went, flew out to the warm up, and then we ran after too. So we had a good week and a half of running, and it's just yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah, I think it's an. I keep saying this. It's a matter of time. I thought he was very fast at the nationals, but then he had the flame out while well, it ran out of fuel, and I think after that his transponder stopped counting, according to his dad. So yeah. they just gotta fix those little gremlins. Right? I know he trying to stretch it out uh, as well. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's only a matter of time for him. Only a matter of time for him. I think SRX has a really great team, both in the USA and in Europe. I mean, in Europe, you have Elliot Boots, Juan Carlos Gnes, Polito is really good. Um, who else? I mean, but also you see a lot Yorn. of SRX. Yorn, Mika, well, you know, all good guys. Mika probably more focused on 10 scale. Great question. What is up with 10 scale? Uh, I know. Uh, been really hard developing uh, a USA style 10 scale car because SRX mostly has been based on a Euro uh, Euro style track uh, Euro carpet and AstroTurf. Uh, I know you're supposed to do some more 10 scale this year. I haven't seen you do much, but tell us, can you let us in on a little bit about what's going on with the 10 scale program at SRX? Yeah, I think right now, um, I think a lot of us are more f- focused on eight scale just because it's an eight scale worlds year. Um, so I think for me after worlds, I'm going to kind of go back into trying to do the 10 scale thing. Um, yeah. It's been kind of hard just with, with what we've been building with the eight scale side of things um, to build that kind of 10 scale car. It takes a <laughs> lot and it's a lot of work. Joe and Spencer Hecker had been killing it. They were, doing so much for the program um and I, it's still um definitely something where it's in the it's in the works for sure got you it's it's the 10 scale isn't as uh flooded with chassis as is the eight scale market it's the eight scale market's very hard right now when it comes to chassis and and tires man it's just so many different chassis so many different tire brands out there and it's a, it's a lot of decisions for the consumer to make. Um, all right. Okay, let's move on to upcoming races. So 
Uh, I don't know if this is going to be out by uh, by program, but we have program coming up, and then we have Wicked Weekend, both good races. I know you went to the program last year. You had fun. A little bit more serious this year. We got some more talent coming this year as well, so that should be good. If you guys don't know what the program is, it's a very great, uh, it's a great concept. Uh, that Brent came up from BTRC where we have a draft night, which was really fun last year. He was a captain of a team. You had to pick some. So basically what happens is after practice, you guys got a list of driver's names. Then you have to pick a sportsman driver and a intermediate driver for your nitro team and your electric buggy team. And then you all got to combine points at the end of the day. And the pro guy actually has the least amount of points. The sportsman guy does. So the, the goal was to help every, like, Basically, everybody works as a team to make sure everybody's car is right, help everybody out, and everybody on the team scores good points. So the, in, the, in the end, the team can win and win a cash payout. So I'm really excited for that. That looks great. But then we had the Wicked Weekend, which was probably one of my favorite races last year, under a roof but open side, similar to the race at RC Program. Last big race for you guys before going to Spain. Uh, what are your expectations at Wicked? At, well, RC Program. I know you want to win it. It's not as stacked this week that that race as Wicked Weekend will be, but it, and completely different tracks too, because Program yeah. is loose and rough and lermy, and Wicked is rough, mm-hmm. but doesn't get loose and lermy. Different loose and lermy. So, what are you yeah. are you looking forward to these two races? Yeah, I am super excited to go, especially after nationals. Um, I'm going to both of them to win, and that's all I want to do. <laughs> that's all you need to know. I'm going to both of them to win. That's the attitude to have right there. And you know what? I would not be surprised if you won both of them or either one of them. Uh, how about Worlds? Going back to Redavon, different, not different, but the same. Yeah. Excited for that? I'm super excited. Um, I think going there, kind of the feel that we got last uh in 2022 i think Mm -hmm. a lot of us are super at least the americans are excited just because we kind of know what we're like going into um you know all of us have our safe setups from the previous one that was there um and for us we were trying things we had never done before kind of like the euro guys when they come here so i'm super excited to uh go back and see uh what, what we can all can do um I don't really know my goal for that one. Um, I'm kind of just going to go into it with open, open minded and see what happens. What, uh, I mean, look, semis is like a win, you know, we're talking semis. Do you think you can make the final? Yeah, for sure. I I think it's semifinals would be awesome there. All right. Um, we're going to wrap this up. I said, I wasn't going to keep you for too long. But I wanted to ask, what does the future look like for Camden Lime in the next couple of years with RC? You're still young. Uh, have you thought of maybe if RC doesn't work out for you, what you're going to do otherwise? Yeah, um, uh, I definitely have a backup plan. It'll just be working for my dad, um, okay. doing that full time. But I don't really want to think like I, I'm kind of got the mentality of this is make or break. And uh, I want to I, I just want to do it. You know what I mean? It's probably not the most smart career choice, but I love it. And if I can make money doing it and live live a good life with it, I, I would love to do that. Oh, yeah. Trust me. I know there there are many people that tell you how you can't make a living in RC, which is very true. But there is a very small section of people that do. Uh, I know all about their struggles. What about RC in general? You've seen it go through many different phases. Uh, you've been, I remember you did used to do some commentary back on live RC when it was only live RC. Now we have three different major, we have more than three, but we have three major broadcasting companies of mass mod live RC, obviously elite RC productions. So broadcast side of things seems to be going better, but we still ain't really getting you young guys into RC as much as we want. So tell us some of the things you think should happen in the, for the future of RC and um, to attract more young guys or even promote you young guys a little bit more. Cause I don't even think we do a good job of that. I mean, it's kind of a tough situation. Um, definitely the young guys are starting to make pushes to the uh, veterans trying to catch up to what, you know, they started and 
Um, they paved a great path for a lot of us young guys um, in RC because it's definitely the most competitive it's ever been in the sport. Um, I think for for younger guys, we need to um, promote like under 15 races more, junior races more, um, and um, really focus on the youth. Um, and I think it's just I don't. It's kind of hard to say. I don't really mm-hmm. know what what to do to get more younger guys in, but um, I think there's definitely a push that there's some younger guys that are making a step. I've been watching the intermediate and even the sportsman guys. There's a bunch of younger kids that are killing it in those uh, categories. So hopefully they uh, keep it going and, you know, we all get to race with some of those guys. Okay. Uh, We see a lot of people. So I, I am also out of the mentality that you guys have to beat these guys. Right. Um, And not just once it has to be a consistent, you know, look, Look, we got Mayfield is 37, probably getting 38. We got Ryan Lutz is 39, getting 40. Cavallari is still out there. Tebow's talking to coming back. So we still have, I mean, Cavallari finished fifth at the Nationals this past weekend, like this two weeks ago. People are like, well, what about when are we gonna I, when are we gonna start giving these new new these young guys a chance? Well, you you have to beat the guys that are still veterans, right? When you start beating them regularly. On constantly, that's when I think the the it will go for you. It will start changing for you guys. But I definitely think there should be more hype on the under fifteen. Then, of course, all the old guys in my age will say, "Well, us forty plus racers, we pay for RC." Yes, but we're all gonna die soon. And you have these young races that we have to encourage to keep on racing, right? Like any other sport, any other hobby, we have to encourage it. How about? getting more people just of any age of any race of any gender anywhere into rc what can we improve on as a young person who's probably more hip than i am and that's probably not even a word you use but more cognizant of social media and all this type of stuff that we're using i still don't think we're using social media to the full potential in rc what about you i also think we uh enforce more social media um Mm -hmm. i think we need to make it almost look like motocross in a way even though it's not even close um i think we can put, make a push to get a lot of those guys i mean a lot of people come from a moto background um mm-hmm. and i know a lot of parents that don't want their kids riding moto competitively because it's a good way to get hurt and this is a way you can do it it's kind of similar in a way obviously it's not even close but in the grand view it is um and i think that you know, those parents don't want their kids to get hurt and RC is a good way to not get hurt yet still have that competitive mentality and throw some fat whips. Absolutely. I I think it's, I think when you touched on two things there, you touched on people that are currently racing motocross, who might get injured. Joe Bornhorst, great example of that. Uh, They seem to have a natural tendency to get, to pick up on offer it very easily. Young kids, like, like I'm, like I'm not gonna lie. I'm struggling with my son right now. Who's addicted to game? He loves gaming. I love gaming too. You know, he, I watched him drive a wicked weekend last year, but he has no interest in RC, none yeah. whatsoever. He'll if you put a, a controller in his hand and you put him on a track, he'll like it. He'll enjoy it. Yeah, right. Yeah. And he'll do pretty well. But it's it, 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 we're fighting for so much of the attention of these young guys. Uh, but. I don't want him to ride. I love motocross. I don't want him to ride motocross. We can't afford him to ride motocross, number one. But we can't afford to do that's RC. A perfect, that's a perfect yeah. example, too. It's uh, cost is a lot cheaper to, to do this. Not saying that it's cheap to do this, but it's a lot cheaper than buying a nice motorcycle and traveling I would agree. with it. And, you could, and he can go to school. And you, a person can go to work on Monday after art, unless there was some term marshal incident. Yeah, of course. But, but I think... Uh, yeah, we just need to push. Like, we need to keep pushing. I think a lot of people are like, we need to get it on TV. I don't I don't think we have a product to get it on TV. No. Yet. I think uh, I think maybe Visions and RCGP were the closest things to getting any type of product. Because you did Visions too, right? Yep, I did both. All, yeah. all of them. So you got a chance to see both sides. Similar, almost similar type of uh, goals, but being done a little bit differently. But... Um, I mean, you got a chance to be on the production side of RCDP, having to be there on time and having to be there for uh, press day and all that type of stuff. And I think as as a professional side of 
that's the professionality that we lack in RC, right? We're not treating you guys are the superstars, you and all these guys coming up, and we're not even treating you. I'm not saying that we should treat you any different, but we you should be the main attraction of what we're doing. And we're not, we should be using you to attract people to come to RC, you know? And I'll be honest with you, not everybody in RC is as well spoken and as comfortable as you are. Because you are very comfortable. You always give good interviews. You're, you've done commentary in front of a camera, which is, I think it's something that we need to work on with, with these up and coming races as well. Like, let them out during it. Remember Max Hess? Well, you never raced again, but Max Hess, he, he runs S Works, uh-huh. ran S Works. I don't know if he runs now. Uh, but, uh, sure. he, Anyway, he is a full-time Red Bull racer. Like he just did in Nuremberg, like where I think he won it or something. I don't know what class or whatever. But when he was at RCG GP running off for I think he was running for Beach RC. Mm-hmm. He uh as soon as you put that camera on that guy, it was like smile talking. And I asked him and I said, Do you guys do? He said, We do we train for this. Yeah. So there's no PR relations in RC, something maybe companies need to hire. And wow, there's more money to spend in it. But definitely have these. They're getting better. We're getting more open. We're getting better. We're, we're saying things and stuff like that, saying what really happened. But we're still, we need, we need some practice, man. We need some practice. But you are very well spoken, very good in front of a camera. So that's always a good thing. So people should look to you for an example. Well, I said I wasn't going to take too much of your time. Uh, I just wanted to have a quick chat with you uh, on your upcoming, what's going on in your career. Keep up the good work, man. Keep having fun. Because one thing I do notice, you always enjoy yourself at the race. So that's good, too. I know your dad's working his ass off, too. So yep. you guys need to cut him some slack, too. But he's done. I think that between him, you, Brent, and everybody at s you guys have done a great job at growing this brand in the last five years to what it is now. And there's just more to come. So congratulations to you guys. I think it's been great. And I... I wouldn't be surprised if an S works wins the damn worlds this year. That's a goal. That's what we shoot for. I would not be surprised at all. I would not be surprised. Well, dude, I will see you at if this comes up before RC Prem or during RC Prem, we'll be at RC Prem, which is in t- two weeks' time. Just under just under two weeks. Time. I think it's. I think it's a week. I leave. I'll be leaving this time next. It's Tuesday. Yeah. Is it Tuesday? I think it's I think it's next week or not next weekend, but um, yeah. yeah. Because okay, see, I forgot that it's even July. It's the second of July. That's yeah. how that's how bad it is. So what? It uh, is in like a week, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not this weekend, but the following weekend as yeah. we're recording this. So that'd be good. I look forward to seeing everybody there. I look forward to seeing you. Hopefully, you come in the booth, hang out with me for a little bit, for whenever sure. you want. Sure. And uh, keep up the good work, man, because you are definitely on an uptick. And I was worried about you for a while because it was like. Man, is he going to choose golf? Which is which would have been the smart thing to do. No offense, which would have been the smart thing I to hear do. It. Uh, because I know people that do golf and ain't pros, but they do golf and they make good money. Or was it going to be RC? But I'm glad you chose RC because we kind of need people like you, right? Mm-hmm. You're the next yeah. generation, literally. They are the next generation of fast guys. Cool, man. Uh, do you want to say some thank yous to before we go? I know you can't remember all your sponsors, so say thank you to all your sponsors. Uh, yeah, I thank all my sponsors. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Um, S-Works, Beach RC, Hot Race, Ultimate, Modelix, um, Nitro Lux Fuel. I always forget, but all the people, they know who they are, so I will remember those sponsors one day. Wolf Den, I know he's got one. BP Designs, Futaba, so I get that, but um, yeah, thanks to all them. Thanks to my friends and family, of course. Um, and then thanks to all, all the people that support me um, throughout what I'm trying to do in this. And uh, yeah, thanks for you for the awesome, awesome stuff you're doing for RC. And uh, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah. Sweet. I hope next year that you get out to some more European races. That's what I hope too. Cause I know I you want to go. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I know you want to go, but cool, man. Uh, good luck at these races and at the worlds. And thank you for your time and the chat and keep, keep up the good work, man. Seriously. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Techno RC. Techno RC is a championship winning manufacturer of high performance, a scale, 10 scale, nitro and electric RC buggies and trucks. 
with a worldwide dealer network, USA and Europe-based headquarters, comprehensive warranty program, and global race support. Techno RC is excellence in RC. View the full lineup of Techno RC race-proven vehicles by visiting www.technorc.com. That's right. Thank you, Techno RC, for your continued support. We greatly appreciate it. You can find links for Techno RC in the written description below. Also, a big shout out to Hot Race Hobby, Hot Race Tires for all their continued support. A tire built from passion by Nicola Maroni, who a racer who made it into who's made it, uh, racing his business. Check out Hot Race Tires. They have treads and compounds for all your racing needs wherever you may be in the world. Uh, thank you, Hot Race, for all their continued support. We greatly appreciate it. Shout out to Nicola for all his help with the podcast. And a big shout out to Beach RC and Brent Densford for all the support of the podcast. We have affiliate links for them in the written description of this podcast as well. Helps us out a lot. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing, JQ Racing, Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today. That's right. A big shout out to Beach RC and all the companies that support the podcast. You can find links for that in the written description of this part of the podcast to help us out. All right. A big shout out to Camden Lime. It was a great chat with him. As I'm recording this, I don't know if we've been to RC, but probably going to be at RC Param. So we'll know how he did there. Good luck to him at Wicked Weekend and the world's coming up. Uh, great young man. Good head on his shoulders. Good to talk to. Great in front of the camera. I like him a lot. His dad's done a great job of raising him. So a big shout out to Tim Lime as well. We hope you guys are enjoying these shorter form podcasts with interviews. Yes, we'll still go do the long interviews where we have we have our RC news and all that stuff to geek out on. Obviously, I'm traveling. These are pre-recorded and I'm putting them up as I travel. We greatly appreciate everybody's support of the podcast and of myself uh, with the commentary. We can't do without you guys' support. Uh, and we hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to hit that like, sub, notification button, comment, and share if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on the audio only, come over and listen to it on YouTube or just come over and give us a like and share. We have a lot of video going on as well that you might be missing out. Uh, a big shout out to the LNRC squad around the world. We can't do this without you guys. Uh, the support has been amazing. 291. We're almost at 300. Incredible. Incredible. We'll be at 300 by September-ish. Probably after after the worlds, I would say, the way things are going. Uh, so we might do a celebration of that. We'll see. But we greatly appreciate it. We need to get those numbers up on the YouTube channel. So don't forget to go over there and hit that 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 sub, like, and notification button. I know I'm repeating myself, but I have to. Uh, also, a uh, big shout-out to the NNRC patrons as well as YouTube members. You guys go to Extra Mile, support us financially. We greatly appreciate it. If you wish to support the co- podcast for the cup of coffee a, a month, you can do it. Links for that in the written description. You get early access to podcasts and other perks. A big shout out to these companies for the support. Remember, showing the sponsors some love shows the podcast some love. They are Invisible Speed, High Tech RC, Corsa Tech USA, Sidewinder Fuel, Mayako, Beach RC, Clinic RC, Stacked RC, Racecraft USA. Big shout out to Elite RC Productions and Donathan RC. Shout out to our official no name drivers David Ronafal, Robert Battier, Alexander Hagberg, Matty G, Peko Ivanen. Yuna Hutton and Mason Fuller. Shout out to our affiliates as well. We have RC Box Club, Call RC, Florida RC Championships, RC Body Armor, House of RC, 36 Mood. You have coupon codes for those companies as well. Thank you for becoming an affiliate partner of the podcast. We greatly appreciate it. Showing those guys some love, shows the podcast some love. Thank you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed episode 291 of the No Name RC Podcast. And um, thank you, Camden Lyon, for your time. Remember, Nitro's the glory. E-Buggy pays the bills. When you listen to this, I'll probably be at Wicked Weekend shortly here, so I look forward to talking to all of you uh, in the chat. With that said, enjoy your weekend of racing, and thank you for all the support. Lefty is out. Bye-bye.